Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity may contain explicit and questionable content. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual podcaster Rebecca Adams and are not based on the advice of a licensed therapist, psychologist, or psychiatrist. Listener discretion is strongly advised. What does ponder actually mean? Well, according to the dictionary, it means think about something carefully, especially before making a decision or reaching a conclusion. Well, as you know, on the Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity podcast episodes, we allow women to share their stories in a non-judgmental way about why they stepped out of their relationships. But there are so many other interesting topics that we all need to learn from and not to judge right away. So let's talk about it now. Let's ponder. I think any person who is not loyal is a piece of shit and undeserving of anything prosperous like a good job, home, and happiness. I received this in my email. I understand not everyone is going to deal with infidelity the way that I do, but the purpose of the podcast is to let other women know they are not alone and they have a voice about what happened in the relationship. In my opinion, infidelity consequences are a lot different for women than they are for men. This person has allowed their opinion and that's okay, but I always ask people not to judge something they don't understand. I'm taking it a little deeper to find out if this person perhaps has been touched by infidelity and is hurting themselves. But I do respect their thoughts and opinions about the subject. I do not know if this was a man or a woman. I don't want to speculate, however, the following comments seem to lean toward the person that sent this to be a male. Welcome everyone to Let's Ponder on Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity. This is Rebecca. Hope everybody is doing great and their summer is going great. It's kind of nice. Things are opening back up and I feel like we're actually kind of getting back to normal, except because I work in a dental office. The uh, mask off for even my job up front is still off the table um, because of the medical setting. So I still have to wear my mask all day at work. And I think I've psyched myself out because now I've gotten used to not having to wear them in public, like at the stores or wherever, that I feel like I can't breathe again. And it's funny how psychosomatically we can do that to ourselves. Today, we're going to talk about not a fan comment. And this that you just heard was something that I had probably received about a year ago via email. And I put it on my Facebook page and I started getting feedback. I let it sit for a little bit and then I went back. No, somebody had gone through my page and commented on it again, which brought it back up to the top. So I started getting a lot more comments and I thought, well, this is good. I'm curious to know how people feel about what this person said and perhaps how they feel about things in general themselves. And on Let's Ponder, I always like to open things up and I love to be able to bring in people's opinions and thoughts on things. So for today's episode, we are going to discuss what people thought about this specific feedback that I had received. And I'm not doing this because negative attention, things like that. The fact is, is I do get negative feedback. I have a very controversial topic, especially those people who were cheated on. Uh, They disagree with this. Not everybody. There's a big chunk, especially those who haven't gone through uh, maybe processing what happened. Um, You know, everybody has a different story. On the other hand, I have many, many listeners who come to me, the men, that were cheated on by women, and they have found the podcast to be helpful. The women who are unfaith, excuse me, the women who were unfaithful, know that they're not alone in the situation. They know they're not going to be judged. They know that I'm going to tell their their story honestly. I'm interpreting the story based on what they send me, and I give my personal feelings and feedback at the end. Um, I've had great 
great uh, communications with people and everything has been wonderful from that. And I love that I'm able to help these women. Um, and like, you know, on Patreon, I have stories of the men who were cheated. So I cheated on. So again, that's still dealing with female infidelity, but it's finding out how the husband or boyfriend, that partner, that side of it, what they went through when they found out, because there's always two sides of a story and an infidelity. It affects two people at the beginning and it can affect so many other people. It's a domino effect. It's unfortunate, but it happens. And it's something we need to talk about. Um, people feel like they're alone when women myself included, I didn't have anybody to talk to. And the person that I did ended up telling my husband everything. Um, and that was okay because it got me out of that situation. So in a way she saved me a lot. Um, she, yeah, she basically saved me from the sinking ship that I was on. Um, and she saved my ex-husband and, uh, but that's been 11 years now. Um, but there's really not a whole lot one can talk about. You know, like I've said in the past, it's not like you can go up and, hey, how's it going? Having drinks? And oh, by the way, I, I'm cheating on my husband. And watch your girlfriends go, what? Because there'll always be someone to quickly judge you. There may be somebody who can understand because they're in the same boat. But once you guys have that with each other, it can kind of make the relationship challenging as well because now each of you know each other's secret and maybe you feel at risk because somebody knows and if you piss somebody off is you're you're always kind of going to be looking over your shoulder so truly there's no one to really talk to and us women are very emotional creatures we like to talk we like to get it out this is the way for women to be able to write out what they're going through share it with other women anonymously it helps them and it helps these other women who are in same situations and that's what this podcast is about but People don't always agree. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to just kind of thumb through here all these different uh, opinions about this specific email that I received. Infidelity. Both women and men alike have found themselves in situations where they have become unfaithful to their spouse or partner. On the podcast, Raw Truth, stories of female infidelity, you hear stories from women who have been unfaithful, but want to share their stories to help others in similar situations or to help other people understand why sometimes infidelity happens. But there is still so much more. How does a man cope when he finds out that his wife, girlfriend, or partner has cheated? What are the reasons why a man chooses to cheat? Are they similar to why a woman does? Or maybe you are the other man or the other woman in a relationship. I knew in my gut that she was still at least chatting with him. She denied it. Our marriage languished. I was miserable. No trust, no romance, no sex. I felt completely unwanted and undesired. About a year later, and still zero sex, my wife left for work and forgot her phone. Not long before that, I happened to see her type her passcode, so I tried it. Unlocked. I knew I was invading her privacy, but my gut told me she was hiding something. She was. To hear the rest of this story, and other stories like this, please visit the website rawtruthstoriesoffemaleinfidelity.com and click on the Patreon link. For a $3 a month pledge, you will get access to these additional episodes as well as early access to regularly released episodes. If you have a story that you would like to be considered for a future podcast, please email rebecca.rawtruth at gmail.com. All submissions will always be anonymous. And always remember, no judgment. So the very first comment was, 
entitled to their opinion, but that's beyond rude. I think the person who sent this would be surprised on how many of their co-workers have cheated on their spouses. Nobody's perfect. And the comment back was, to that, very true. To be fair, this person really could have been put through the ringer, done everything right, was cheated on, and taken to the cleaners. The problem is that the email implies someone who cheats is beyond redemption. I have no issue saying cheating is wrong, hence the word cheat is not a good word to be on tests or sports, but that does not define someone, uh, someone cheating as different from others. I mean, there is a big difference as a dead bedroom, like years without sex and the husband will not even attempt to fix it, or wow, I can't believe a guy of 20 years younger paid attention to me. Some may disagree and say cheating is cheating. I think it is all wrong no matter how bad the spouse is. Like many say, leave the relationship, don't cheat. But it's not always that simple. The next comment was, I think people like that see infidelity as a black and white issue, and it is far from it. A woman in pain will do things even she never thought she would do. And then feedback on that comment was, so very true. No woman wakes up one day and says, you know, I think I'd like to ruin our lives today. I came back with, indeed. In fact, I think I say that in one of my many episodes. Feedback continued, exactly. I didn't stray just because it seemed fun. We had a very dysfunctional relationship and there wasn't a lot of love from either direction at that point. We had been together just under eight years when I strayed, and it wasn't something I just jumped into. It got there gradually. The next comment was, The saying, once a cheater, always a cheater, isn't true at all. I am in a happy, fulfilling relationship and have never felt the need to go outside of that relationship. It takes a lot of bad to push me to that point, but it's not as simple as one little argument pushing someone that far. And then she wrote, or he wrote, For someone who is generally a loyal person and they are put through a lot of pain and emptiness, sometimes leaving is not always an option. And people's feedback to that comment were, Cheating isn't an option when in love. I do like that saying, and I will say I agree with you. I often hear, once a cheater, always a cheater. Now a ponder idea I have is, should you inform a new person about your past cheating? Quick segue on that one. And I, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I'm definitely going to have to look into that. I need to write that down. Uh, me personally, I've always been honest about my past because I feel it's important to be transparent and you don't know what this person you're potentially um, going to establish a relationship with. Um, has in their own history. Maybe they've been unfaithful and you want to know about it. Um, Maybe they're very scared because of what had happened in the past. But I have found um, um, my husband that passed away and even the man that I've been seeing now, they both knew of my past. And um, I think it just helped because I continued the transparency and talk about it clearly. And obviously they both um, knew and know that I have this podcast and, um, you know, it, I, for me personally, I'd rather be a hundred percent upfront and honest because if a person is going to not want to trust me from the beginning, then it's going to be a difficult relationship. Um, If a person is willing to trust you and you're being open and honest, then you know, I think that's, you know, that, that's a, that's good. I mean, they want to know and, uh, So that's my thoughts and opinion, but I appreciate that. I'm definitely going to look into that for a future episode. I'm going to write that down right now. Okay, back to the uh, feedback from that initial comment. This is a nice sounding, very subjective and limited view. Love is defined by the people experience it, and it is not always sexually exclusive. And the next person said, see, I agree to a point. I had fallen out of love with my now ex-husband and no, the marriage didn't end because of my infidelity. We actually worked through it, had another baby, and he didn't change his ways, even though I did. The drinking, the narcissism, the verbal abuse, if anything, got worse. I stayed for just a little over a year. 
decided I'd had enough and left. Okay. So the next uh, comment to my post was, wow, that's harsh. There's always an underlying issue. And uh, feedback to that person's comment was, I will agree with the exception of the drunk hookup. And I only say that as on a board I was on with a few women mentioning this and they described their husbands as perfect in every way. So I have to say not always, but I'll say a super majority. Some is validation, some is vanity. A couple stories deal with lack of satisfying sex. I have said many times, I bet my guitar, any man would rather be told, honey, this is good, but if we could do more of dot, 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 this, than be cheated on. But even women I know have a hard time asking. Heck, I know women shocked that I was into oral. Some were afraid to ever ask a guy and none was offered. All you can do is ask. He won't know if a woman fakes it. Then he is shocked. (laughs) Okay, the next comment to my post was, I would say yes, in both parts. This case is more likely very fresh still. Anger is harsh, bitter, brutal, and for some it takes a long while to get a handle on it. The next comment to my post was, that's the dumbest thing I've ever read. This person obviously has been scorned and never seek therapy that they obviously need. My feedback to that was, and that is why I inquired back as to if they had been affected by infidelity in their own lives, try and get in and find out a little bit about what's going on that would have caused them to feel this way. Next feedback uh, to the uh, comment was, it is a bit harsh. I get the anger, but behind karma is one. I do not go further and not all cheating is the same. I mean, there are men and women that do some pretty horrible things and today with technology will likely get caught sooner or later. Some will not care. Others will when they get caught. I mean, I could not imagine if I were some of the guys with the worst situations in the podcast saying that a, that of a spouse that betrays me. Now, I do think we all do not want it to work with the person that our spouses cheat on us with, but from statistics, it seems it often does not anyway. The next comment to the post was, what if the other partner gave absolutely nothing or lied another way and you couldn't get out that easily? Critical thinking is hard. The next comment was, I would like to add that spouses can work together and come out stronger in the end as a couple so long as both sides are willing to admit their wrongs and work on it. My husband and I reconciled at his persistence, and he and I are both working on being better spouses to one another. I have not had the urge to stray since we reconciled, and we are expecting our third child now. Granted, it wasn't a, hey, let's have a baby to fix our relationship thing. My birth control failed. Ah! We both wanted to work on our relationship and get on solid ground and throwing a pregnancy in the mix makes it even that much harder on us, but we are getting through it. And feedback to that comment was, I agree, and while I do not understand, as some say their relationships are even stronger, but perhaps that is likely because one did not pay enough attention to the other. As we know from the podcast, some spouses have a hard time communicating. Uh, Next uh, feedback was, um, many say he, she cheats, it's over. But the truth is, one never knows. There are marriages that are dead, but one is staying for one of the for one, the kids, or two, finances, and sometimes they fall back in love. In some cases, the betraying spouse might even think they are, quote, forgiven, when in reality, it's easier to stay married. But I am sure people do not come back together, and there are many variables. A one-night stand with a stranger often is easier to forgive than a long-term affair with a best friend your husband or wife plan to leave you for. Congrats on working it out. I love happy endings. Not sure if you shared on the podcast, but I hope you do. It's nice to hear some on the podcast now and then. I think it's nice to hear good good endings, happy endings on the podcast, I think is what they were saying. All right, and the next um, uh, feedback was, Oh, how things come back around. He and I are no longer together. After three months of reconciling, he went back to his constant drinking and verbal abuse, and I am far happier for it. Oy. Okay. Uh, next comment was, yeah, because people who make mistakes should just roll over and die. 
and then I roll. <laughs> and the uh, comment was, or the um, feedback to that comment was, great point. I think people should recognize them and if possibly atone, but I told a person one time that just because you do a bad thing doesn't make you a bad person. Cheating does not define me, but I will never claim it was not a betrayal or I was wrong, but that is me. And I agree. It doesn't define who I am either. I mean, if anything, I've turned it into something. I'm trying to make something positive out of it by just being supportive of other people, not judge, help them through this. Um, but yeah, it was wrong. What I did was wrong and I will be the first to admit it. Okay. So another comment was loyalty has nothing to do with fidelity. And another person wrote, that sounds so dumb. It is not even worth a single emotion. (laughs) And the next one was that view takes simplistic and simplifies it. There are so many things people looking in from the outside don't know. For example, like mental health. Um, career prospects problems or health concerns um, of them their family or relations etc sex drive or lack thereof or both sorry that was kind of written out (laughs) in a challenging way for me okay so feedback to that comment was I always say for example one reason I really quote get cheating is a dead bedroom. Others say it's always wrong, which I agree with, but I think there are many cases that are different than others, even in the podcast. I like how this person refers to the show. It means that they're a dedicated listener. <laughs> All right. The next comment was, well, this whole thread hit hard this morning. Like, damn guys. My response to that was, I haven't heard back from this person. I inquired as to their own history. Next comment was dumbest thing I've ever read. And next comment was, geez, quote, loyal is a subjective term. And the other things are unrelated, bitter, entitled, and just be thankful they're not your partner. (laughs) And the person, um, their feedback to that comment was, he could have really been a good spouse, though, who was really hurt. But I do get your sentiment. There are some spouses who are like kids with toys that only want it if someone else plays with it. Okay, interesting. All right. Um, This next one, next comment was, I was good to him, did everything for him. He had a, quote, arrangement with his wife, but we had known each other for 15 years and we fell in love. I waited for over two years, got pushed out of a moving vehicle, and then fell into a creek and almost drowned. He moved in with me two times, destroyed damn near everything I owned. He cheated on me and would get drunk and accuse me. There's the other side of it, too. The first time he left, I talked to one guy that tried to sexually assault me. And and when him and I got back together, I was still traumatized and didn't tell him about it. I just wanted to forget about it. He forced me to tell him and then messaged the guy and told my now ex that I pleasured him sexually for a pack of cigarettes and my ex believed him. From that day on, I was whore and for a year and a half, he did everything possible to tear me down. I never cheated on him, and I should have listened to my mother when she told me that how I got him was how I would lose him. Oh, man. So this was from another woman, the other woman, kind of a thing. Uh, Feedback on that was, I'm sorry to hear that as it sounds like you went through a heck of a lot. It was horrible, but it sounds like it took a lot for you to share this, and I do often tell friends, both male and female, that are thinking of cheating about these situations that can happen. Um, And I have done some stories about being the other man or the other woman, and that's tough. Okay, Uh, next comment was, I'm guessing this person is in a great deal of pain. And my comment was, that was my thought, or my feedback rather, that was my thought as well. So that's why I inquired back as if they had been infected by the subject themselves, but I haven't heard anything. And um, this person came back with, I wouldn't expect a response. The person isn't ready to face it, in my opinion. Good point. Okay. Next comment was, I don't believe it is right to cheat on a partner, but that's my opinion. I try to live by how I personally would like to be treated. If you're in a relationship and you're not happy, get out first and then start to look for or take up on a more positive one. I have never been cheated on, but if someone did that to me, it would cause a whole lot of upset. And that, and what if you have children? If you're a cheat, what else are you capable of? 
And feedback to that comment was, very fair and balanced way to look at it. Rebecca says that a lot. Don't cheat in the relationship, and I think one of the more recent stories says that. Monica's, I think. She also stresses communication before cheating. And the next feedback to this was, keep in mind, it's not always easy as just leaving. And that's a good point there, too. Okay. Next comment was, each to their own. I can't dictate to anyone else, but I personally would never go there. It's just how I am. And I have no BC question mark anger. I'm not sure what that means. Anger or grief, uh, because it has, this has not happened to me. All I know is cheating is not my way to deal with issues in an unsatisfying relationship. I would prefer to sort this all out first and then move on. We are all different. Nice. Uh, The next comment was, no one is perfect. Being bitter will get you nowhere. You'll only stay trapped, unhappy, and miserable. The opposite of what you wish for that person. Life goes on. Sometimes people forget to take accountability for their part in things, which takes you being able to forgive yourself and the other party for the offense. How you can complain about someone cheating if you know they've cheated and you chose to stay or you choose to stay. Um... And the feedback to that comment was, I agree, but when you read on recovering from infidelity, it seems many sources also say, don't blame the betrayed spouse as there is 100% choice to cheat. Now, some reasons are much better than others. And it's true. I mean, yes, you don't want to cheat, right? It's not like you go into a relationship planning to cheat most of the time, I would hope. But... um. There is two sides of a story, and I know men and women alike will say, I did everything I could, and I needed this attention, I needed this love, I needed this, 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 and I wasn't getting it, and I needed to feel good, and they stepped out. So at that point, they're saying, perhaps, uh, my spouse wasn't giving me what I needed, and I needed to do this. So that is not the cheater taking a hundred percent. You know. Anyways, it's it's such a complex situation, and uh, I'll learn more as I continue on with my studies for my uh, coaching. Okay, the next um, comment to the post was, "I won't dignify that with an answer. You have no idea where a person's life is. I believe in loyalty." I felt the same, but I do believe if you cheated once and you repented, it should be forgiven. But if you repeatedly cheat, then the person cannot be forgiven. And I understand that too. You give them another try, you're working through it, and the person can't stop being unfaithful. It's time to cut ties and and move on is what that person's saying, and I understand. Okay, so... The next comment was, for a lady, it's difficult out there. She constantly is receiving compliments from men, but it's up to her not to act on those impulses. And uh, feedback to that was, we are all responsible for, quote, our own ball and score. Like Rebecca says, chosen to. She does not say, gave into temptation or made a mistake, which minimizes things. Your main point, yes, women do have much easier access to sex. A large reason is men are, in a way, mostly dogs. For example, how many times at a party in college do you see the homecoming queen go home for a one-night stand with the president of the the chess club, Boindexter? On the other hand, how many times do you see hot guys take a girl home that you know they would never be seen in public with? I never did this, but saw it happen many times. I also have way more female friends than male friends, but this can be a blessing and a curse to women. If you are a modern woman and you do not care about how many men you are with, what your future husband, boyfriend will think is a whole nother debate, then it's good. A girl, I hate to rate women, but say a four or five, can sleep with a nine. Now in many cases, he is not going to settle, settle own particularly after one night stand with her, But the guy who is a four or five is not getting a woman, likely even a seven or eight for sex or a hookup. This is confusing for me. I'm trying to, hopefully you guys are understanding this. This might date as women seem to care way more about loyalty and how they are treated, while a lot of guys still care about how good a woman looks on their arm and 
uh, not all are that way. There are examples all over dating advice sites of the girl pissed at the guy. He gives her the space. Most women want us to chase them even if they want space. And, well, he does not care. I need to get over him. Go on Tinder, hook up, and then they find out he did care. Now, there is the one, do I tell him, or two, do I not, and hope he does not flip out and marriages marriages end decades after infidelity. I mean, only certain types will write to the podcast a majority of the time. I am sure there are stories from all races, incomes, etc. But in many OMG, it was a one-time mistake, and I am taking that to the grave. It's often never heard about. I'm in a few marriage support groups, and cheating is often brought up. I um, often advise against it even though I did it, and it was wrong then, and it is wrong now. I always say, if you do, be prepared for the consequences, and some can be horrible. In the case of raw truth, since we are dealing with female infidelity, men are more far, men are far more likely to end their lives over being cheated on and losing the house, kids, paying alimony and support. Women are getting hit with it now as well, but there are still more stay-at-home moms than dads, and in most states, a guy can do everything right, or a woman, and the other party cheats, and you can lose half of your stuff plus part of your pension and so forth. I mean, the podcast has a couple of examples of women who cheated to get even or to put them in their place. Most cases of cheating, the affairs are not planned long term and are not to hurt someone but to fulfill a need. I think Rebecca even mentioned the women are more likely to fall for the affair partner than the affair partner fall for them, hence men after sex often. Um, Sorry, I'm I'm reading through this and hopefully you guys are following. It's kind of choppy on the message. I think it's an old saying, quote, women have the keys to sex, but men have the keys to the relationships, end quote. Now, as sick as our society has become, many women are as bad today as the men were 25 years ago. I would be scared to death to be dating in my 20s unless I was dating a woman in their 30s and 40s, which I would have, but most said I have because most have said I have old, shoes older than you but you are so adorable so he's saying that he would be he would prefer to date older women if he were in his 20s but he's glad he's not out there dating as a young 20 something so well this was interesting um all because of one comment and I really appreciated what everybody had to say about it and um you know everybody I love having different opinions and then people kind of not bantering back and forth but but discussing it. And again, nobody is accusing anybody or calling anybody a negative. I did not edit this other than maybe um, grammatical errors to the best of my ability here. Um, but uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody being respectful of other people's opinions. That's kind of challenging at times. So some future ponder ideas that I'm working with and I'm putting it out there. I would love you to message me, rebecca.rawtruth at gmail.com with um, any, if you have any thoughts on bad cheesy pickup lines. I have received some hilarious ones, but I want more. Give me more. Anything that you might have heard or or chosen to use or maybe was used on you. Um, so I would lo- definitely love that. Also, sex toys. I'm curious to know sex toys in the bedroom do you agree do you disagree advantages disadvantages um another one let's see here was strange locations of where you've had sex and i'm going to talk about the weirdest place or the wrongest place i guess for me (laughs) revenge cheating also your thoughts and opinions about revenge cheating And also, if you're in a polyamorous relationship and you want to share your stories, shoot me an email, um, maybe about what had happened to, um, you know, at what point did you decide that poly was for you, Um, your experiences with it, maybe it's no longer for you, what happened? I would love to get your stories on that for future ponder as well. Again, Rebecca.rawtruth at gmail.com. Thank you all for listening to today's episode. 
I hope this podcast has been helpful to you. And if you are interested in sharing your story, always know it is anonymous. You can visit my website at rawtruthstoriesoffemaleinfidelity.com and click on Story Guides. And there you will find an outline to help you form your story for the podcast. While you're visiting my website, feel free to vote for me to be in the Hot 50 Countdown for Podcast Magazine. Visit the merch store in case you're interested in some no-judgment coffee mugs or a tote bag. If you are interested in subscribing to Patreon for those extra episodes and my bloopers, you can also subscribe directly from my website by clicking on Patreon. Also, if you could please rate and review me where you listen to your podcasts, especially on Apple, that would be great as it will help others find this show. Feel free to email me anytime at rebecca.rawtruth at gmail.com. Thank you again for all of your support. Please be kind to one another. Stay well, stay happy, and always remember, no judgment. Goodbye. Goodbye.